Hello everyone, this is Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Welcome to today's DIY video. If you're new to my channel, please know that I like to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I have three wood projects for you using Jenga blocks, paint sticks, and clothespins. I really hope you like what you see. Let's get going. For today's first project, I'm using some tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, a recycled chicken can, some contact paper from Dollar Tree, some paint and wood glue, also some succulents, some foam, and some jute twine. I show these rocks here, but I end up using floral moss. So the first thing I'm doing is taking my favorite antique wax in Waverly's line, and I'm giving each of these tumbling tower blocks a coat. Now if you've never used this, you wipe it on, let it sit for a minute, and then wipe off the excess. I show 12 here, but I'm actually needing 14. So if you're making this project, make sure you use 14 of the tumbling tower blocks. I prefer these natural wood colored ones. I feel like they're, the edges are a little um, better. And I really hope Dollar Tree comes out with the whole box is of just the natural ones. So with two of the blocks, once they're dry, you're going to glue them together like a sandwich cookie. Get out the extra wood glue there. And then these eight that I have here on the right, you're gonna make four sets of two together like this, like I'm showing you. And with this wood glue, it does dry pretty quick, but I like to let it sit for I don't know, at least an hour, so I know that it's really, really good and dry, but I really like this Gorilla Wood Glue. I'm running out and need a new bottle. All right, then the other four blocks, you're going to just leave how they are for right now until these dry. All right, so here's the sets of two that are dry. Now those single ones that you left, you're going to glue one like this and what I'm doing is I'm lining it up right on the crack or the line where the other two are glued together. I think that makes sense. If you see, it's a little higher up towards the top because I'm putting it above that line where the two are glued together. So you're going to make four sets of this. Now, once those are dry, you can see I have my can upside down just to kind of um, get these lined up. The two that we made the little sandwich cookie out of are going to be um, there at the middle of the can. And then here, I'm just gluing these four, what shape is that, like a T, um, around those two that are in the center. So. Um, I think you can see here, we're putting these two together. I'm gonna end up moving them off the can and just laying them flat on the table to make sure it was completely flat. So there you can have a better picture of how I'm gluing them together. And once that's dry, I'm gonna glue this one here on the top. And once that's dry, I will glue the fourth one on to make an X or a plus sign like this. Now this whole thing is still upside down because that center piece is pointing up to us. But once it is completely dry, we will be able to flip it over. Now while all that's finishing drying, I'm taking my can from some canned chicken. And here I'm just kind of rolling it to measure how long of a piece of this contact paper I will need to go all the way around. I really love this white 
contact paper with the black flowers. I've had it for a long time and have never used it. So here I'm just using my trimmer to trim a piece. Um, I think I did about 12 inches long and then it ended up being about two and a quarter inches tall. So once I had that measured out and trimmed, I'm going ahead and peeling and sticking it to the can as I go, just rubbing out any bubbles. This um, contact paper is very forgiving, and if you had to pull it back up, it came up easily. Here I'm just kind of wrapping the little excess that is on the bottom, and I just love that. It's so cute. I decided to dress up and kind of cover up that top edge, so I did end up going two times around the top of the can with my jute twine from Walmart. Next, taking a piece of my floral foam from Dollar Tree, I'm just trimming it with, uh, what is that, a scraper to kind of round it out and then make it a little bit shorter so that it will fit inside the can. And then I'm going to just put some hot glue in there and secure it in place. Next, putting a little more hot glue on top of the foam. Like I said, I was going to use those blue rocks and then I decided to keep it with green and just use a little bit of this moss also from Dollar Tree. You can see there's the little um, spaces where the foam didn't touch the can, so I just shoved some more of the moss down there and I really like how it looks. Next, taking a few of my artificial succulents from Dollar Tree, I'm just removing them from the little pot that they come in and here had to reattach the little stick, but then just arranging them by poking them into the floral foam. I did not even um, hot glue them. I just kind of poked them into the foam and arranged them and then rearranged them. I did want to add, now all three of those are from Dollar Tree. I did also have this long one that I believe I bought at Hobby Lobby on sale. I'm just going to add a couple pieces of this one just for a different texture and a different look. And here, once I finally got everything arranged how I wanted it, I flipped over the little stand that I made. And I think this looks so high end. I just love how it looks with that wood and the antique wax. I hope you guys enjoy it as well and have fun. I plan on making more of these and giving them as gifts. For our second project today, I am using 20 actual Jenga blocks from a Jenga game and one pack of one gallon paint stir sticks, a couple different colors of chalk paint and some wood glue. Um, I'm not gonna show you how I stain these again because I just showed you in the first DIY, but um, I will say that these Jenga blocks, I always look for these when I go to thrift stores and garage sales, Jenga games, because you get like 50 pieces. Um, but I am going to do the same technique with my antique wax on all 
20 of these. Now, I'm going to glue together two sets of three. So here you see one set of three and then the other set of three. And then I'm going to make two lines or sets of seven. So that is your 20 Jenga blocks, seven, seven, three, and three. Again, making sure you let that sit and dry, wiping away any excess, and waiting until the antique wax is completely dry before you try gluing these together. So there's my three and three, and then I'm going to do seven and seven in the same manner. and here they are completely dry. Now, with my paint stir sticks, while they were still wrapped, I did cut them on my dad's saw, and all I did was cut them till right before it starts to indent. So, um, I think they're about seven or eight inches long. I'm taking some of my mineral chalk paint and watering it down because I wanna give this kind of a, a gray wash. Um, so you can still kind of see the grain of the wood. Now, of course, you could make this project and do the painting in whatever colors that you choose. This is just what I wanted to kind of go with my modern farmhouse aesthetic. So I'm going to give all 10 of these this whitewash just on this front side and the edges. I didn't worry about painting the back side. Now you can see down there that black metal um, corner ruler from Dollar Tree. So here I'm taking a set of three on the left and then I am gluing a set of seven there and I have it sitting on top of the three. Now when I come to the other side, I'm going to do this other seven next to, okay? So it's going to make it a little wider and I feel like gluing it this way makes it a little more stable. All right, so this other side is going to be next to the set of three and then our other set of three will complete the rectangle. I really like this corner um, ruler from Dollar Tree. It's definitely a must have if you're doing any sort of constructing like this. So once our Jenga block frame was completely dry, I took the 10 paint stir sticks and I first laid them out, spaced them out evenly. This is the back of the project and now I'm just uh, gluing them. I guess I did paint the backs of the paint sticks. Okay, I wanted it to be a little more finished looking, but I'm just using that same wood glue and gluing them to the back of the frame. And here's what the back looks like with all of the paint sticks glued on. Next, I'm taking a few of these little um, clips that I bought, I think at Hobby Lobby, and I actually spray painted them with that more of a nickel color. Um, I'm gonna use three of them on this project, and here I'm using some of the Fix All Adhesive from Dollar Tree. I put some on the back of just that little circle and then you'll see I'm going to add some more fix all kind of in between so it sandwiches that uh, back of the clip. Now I did let these sit overnight. I wanted to make sure they were good and strong. Next I decided to take some of my sticker letters. I thought maybe I wanted to write the word family at the top but then I just decided to do memories that left it, um, it could be you know, pictures or postcards of anything. So I'm just using these sticker letters. And if you've never seen me do this trick before, I kind of line them up on this ruler and then I'm able to center it before sticking them down on the project. So I'm going to attach these to the top of the Jenga block frame. 
and then press them down. Of course, you could make yours say whatever you wanted. If you wanted to do the last name of someone you were making this for, you could maybe use some of the metal words from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby, whatever you wanna do. You could even use some of the wood letters in the craft section at Dollar Tree. Just make this your own. And I did have to fix a couple of them. <laughs> But once I had the stickers how I wanted them, I did spray it with a matte clear spray and then actually did go all the way around just the Jenga block frame with that matte clear spray. And here's what the project looks like finished. I just added a couple pictures up there to give you an idea. I love how this turned out. For my third project, I'm using a bag of clothespins from Dollar Tree and some wood glue. And also my antique wax. And then I decided to use these four beads as feet. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking apart these clothespins and I'm going to remove the two halves from the little metal spring. So once you have all those taken apart, I decided on this to glue the two halves of each clothespin um, back to back, if that makes sense. So I just kind of took the one that would have been on the bottom and put it on top to make this interesting pattern. And I'm gonna do that to all of my pieces. I'm trying really hard to get them lined up evenly and then put them together in a circle as you see here. I did use wood glue and made sure those were all glued together. It did take some moving around to make sure they all met perfectly. And then I decided I wanted to make this into a little bit of a riser. So I used these four big round beads that I had on hand. Of course, you could use um, those little wood candle cups, anything you have. I just thought this would be cute. You could just leave it flat and use it kind of more like a trivet, but this is what it looks like, just decorated with a couple little pieces from Dollar Tree. So I hope you guys like this idea. I hope you enjoyed all three of these projects. You know I love working with wood. If you've seen any of my other videos, please let me know in the comments which of these projects you enjoyed the best. I hope if you are not subscribed to my channel, you will consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. Also make sure you hit that bell icon and choose all so you won't miss any of my future uploads. And please give this video a thumbs up to help me grow my channel. Bye.